庆祝二零二三中巴旅游交流年。Discover Bhatia. It is a special term and ode to our relationship. Bhatia means iron brother, only reserved for Pakistan and China. 旅游复苏，文明互鉴。风云对话特别节目之大使文化旅游论坛正在播出。中国与巴基斯坦是全天候战略合作伙伴，中巴友好关系源远,远流长。从古老的丝绸之路到当代的“一带一路”倡议，一直以来，中巴两国政府和人民用行动诠释着铁杆兄弟的情谊。二零二三年是共建“一带一路”倡议提出十周年，是中巴经济走廊启动十周年，也是首个中巴旅游交流年。作为旅游交流年的重要组成部分，巴基斯坦驻华使馆与凤凰卫视共同筹办了巴基斯坦中文旅游网站“发现巴铁”的上线仪式。多国驻华使节、外交部、文化和旅游部高级官员、凤凰卫视集团领导以及媒体等各界代表参加了活动。在本次活动中，巴基斯坦外交国务部长希纳在视频致辞当中表达了对网站上线的祝贺。Pakistan-China friendship is one which shows the world what true friends can be. This is a partnership which has developed over many, many years based on mutual trust, on goodwill and confidence between not only the leadership but also between the two peoples. Because of our civilizational links and our strong friendship, this. Is an opportunity that we feel that the Chinese and Pakistani brothers and sister can explore each other's area, each other's countries in a way like never before.、Uh, in a world which is increasingly beset by political、uh, discord,、uh, the two peoples, the Iron Brother friendship that exists between Pakistan and China, offers our countries to be able to bring people together, to be able to have people-to-people -people contact, and really offer a pathway to peace. Through sharing our civilizational, our historical linkages. With that, let me once again congratulate all of you who are there, and wish you all the success in this very important endeavor. Pakistan Prime Minister Moin Haque said in his address that the Find Bus Tour website is a gift to Bhutan for its special relationship. 网站除了为中国游客提供全面的指南外，还将有助于加强人文交流。凤凰卫视执行副总裁李琦在致辞当中表达了通过中巴旅游交流年对促进两国人文合作的期待。巴基斯坦历史积淀深厚，文化绚丽多姿，早在几千年前就是印度河流域文明的中心地带之一。巍峨壮丽的喜马拉雅山脉和古老的印度河流域，孕育了巴基斯坦优美如画的自然风光和丰富多彩的人文历史。发现巴铁网站将以中文发布巴基斯坦的旅游信息，旨在为中国游客提供前往巴基斯坦的一站式解决方案。女士们、先生们 ，You ready? Three, two, one. Yes, congratulations. Launching the ceremony, Fun Radio Team invited the attendees from the Azerbaijan, Jordan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Egypt, and Turkey to discuss the future of the country and the future of the country. Six countries will be present. 随着中国公民出境游恢复常态，这六个“一带一路”沿线国家都已经准备好，张开双臂喜迎中国游客。It's great to have you, Your Excellencies. Welcome to this very special edition of Talk with World Leaders, a special program with ambassadors from six countries: Azerbaijan, Jordan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Egypt, and Turkey. To discuss the rebound in tourism and the exchanges between civilizations, the six countries represented today are all Islamic countries that are popular tourism destinations. Okay, my first question, Your Excellencies, what measures have your countries adopted to attract Chinese tourists? Alternatively, you could also introduce a tourist destination in your country. Ambassador Moyen, perhaps. Thank you, Nancy.、Uh, wonderful to be here among my 
colleague ambassadors to talk about tourism and uh, especially after the opening up of this year. Pakistan, of course, as you know, this event, we have launched a special website in Chinese language. This is a very important step to introduce Pakistan to China, to introduce our tourism industry and strength in Chinese language. So th I think this is a very important step that we are taking. And we hope that this year, when we are celebrating our year of tourism exchanges, more Chinese will come to Pakistan. But there are many series of events that we are taking place in this year to not only to encourage, facilitate travelers from China to come to Pakistan. The most important one was the, an exhibition on Gandhara civilization, which we launched in March this year, which was the largest Gandhara civilization in Chinese history. I'm so very proud of that. So these are various elements of our strategy to benefit from this boom, which is now taking place after the opening up. I hope, as I mentioned earlier, Pakistan is a friendly country and Chinese visitors and friends would take opportunity, benefit of that and visit Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Moyen. I think all of those you listed are very important strategies and very concrete steps uh, towards enhancing tourism cooperation between China and Pakistan. Wonderful. I'm going to ask Ambassador Zanali for your remarks, please. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, as Ambassador Moin uh, mentioned, Azerbaijan also attached importance on attracting Chinese tourists to Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan is part of the Islamic civilization. Azerbaijan has a long history, rich culture, located at the junction of East and the West, uh, very secular country, very rapidly developing country. There is direct flight from Urumqi to Baku. Azerbaijan is not far away from China. It's just six hours, 20 minutes to flying. We have uh, nine climatic zones from existed 11. So it makes the environment nature of Azerbaijan very diverse. So uh, every Chinese tourist can find very interesting something for him. You, you like the sunny beaches, sand beaches. This is Absheron Peninsula. But if you drive just one hour, you are in mountain areas and you have very nice ski resort, winter tourism. I would like to take this opportunity to invite all our Chinese friends uh, to visit Azerbaijan. They are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Zanali, for that uh, very visual, I would say, introduction. I think I can see a lot of the pictures myself already. I look forward to visiting Azerbaijan myself. Thank you. And our next speaker, I would invite Ambassador Al Husseini, Ambassador of Jordan, to make your remarks, please. Thank you so much. I'd like also to join in thanking you for inviting me with my dear colleague, Ambassadors. Uh, it's nice to be here again, back here in, in Phoenix. And it's nice to talk about uh, my country, Jordan, again, through this uh, very excellent and very important channel. Uh, I know that in China, the social media has been very much uh, effective and active. And we tried it our best to utilize this uh, social media here in China to promote my country, Jordan, as much as possible. For a direct flight, we are hoping that by October this year, we will be starting a four flights a week uh, direct flight from China to my country, Jordan, which is going to be a very much uh, convenient and would fa facilitate very much their choice of tourism in my country, Jordan. Also, we have launched a new system for visa few minutes will be enough for you to get your visa with all the requirements and all the needed to issue the visa online and to get you to Jordan at any time with any way and route to my country Jordan. So conclude by wishing you all a very soon happy and pleasant journey to my country Jordan and that I can assure you that you will enjoy the best of your vacation there. Thank you. Thank you very much Ambassador. Concrete measures direct flights four times a week, um, you know, making visas easier to get. I think we will all appreciate all these measures that your country is taking to attract uh, tourists, not only from China, but also from other parts of the world. Thank you. And we would now invite Your Excellency, Ambassador of Malaysia, 
Ambassador Nusha Wan, to please make your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Very nice to, to be here and to see you again. I'd like to thank my brother, the Ambassador Moin from Pakistan, for this very kind invitation. Um, just to give a flavor to uh, all of you about the depth of relationship, especially in the tourism area between Malaysia and China, we hope uh, to resume the same number of flights uh, very soon. So that's one of the uh, important strategies that we have. Um, secondly, also like uh, the Ambassador of Jordan mentioned, um, visas are now more easily available because they're available online at the present moment. Um, and relative to other countries, the fees are quite cheap as well. Um, finally, and uh, we have uh, some measures which are de dedicated to uh, Chinese tourists. For example, we have help desks um, in all of the major airports uh, in Malaysia, which have a direct connectivity uh, between Malaysia and China. So this will facilitate in terms of uh, language, uh, in terms of um, finding even practical things, which we hope will make uh, the experience of Chinese tourists in Malaysia easier and uh, more pleasant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Nusha Wan. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure the figures is going to come back up. And of course, Malaysia is very familiar, popular tourism destination for Chinese tourists. And uh, thank you for sharing with us the details of the measures that your country is taking to uh, boost tourism rebound. Okay, now, Ambassador of Egypt, I would ask Assem Hanafi, Your Excellency, please, to make your remarks. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nancy, for uh, uh, hosting us today. And, uh, of course, uh, I extend my thanks to His Excellency, uh, Brother and Ambassador uh, Moin Haq, for uh, introducing me, actually, to this uh, very esteemed uh, gathering and uh, uh, important panel discussion, uh, focusing on tourism. Egypt and China uh, both share a very uh, old civilization and heritage. And this is one of the main attractions that uh, Chinese tourists uh, uh, focus on when they consider Egypt as one of their destinations. Egyptian history is being taught in, uh, to school children, and so there is a big uh, familiarity with uh, our history and our uh, monuments, uh, which is, of course, a very, uh, uh, very important uh, conducive element to, uh, to getting more uh, tourism uh, uh, flow for uh, our country. Of course, uh, this is a, there's a direct flight between Beijing and Cairo now is re-established. Uh, and of course, I announce with great pride the uh, opening of the Grand Museum, uh, the new Grand Museum of, of Cairo, which is supposed to be one of the biggest in the world and is, is opening soon. And this is, of course, will be a, a, a very uh, important occasion to showcase uh, our monuments and our heritage. If you ask me about what city do I suggest, of course, I will go for the unconventional answer, which is Alexandria. Now, uh, of course, uh, Luxor is familiar with many Chinese tourists, Aswan, Cairo. Uh, of course, these are all the priority cities, but in Alexandria, this, it offers another flair, another dimension, which is the Greek or Roman uh, Egyptian heritage, Egyptian ancient civilization, all mixed together in a very uh, interesting cosmopolitan mix, of course. It gives a, a gateway to the Mediterranean and gateway to Africa. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, place to visit. It hosts also one of the biggest libraries in the world, which is the Biblioteca Alexandrina, as you know. So, uh, and it's not very far from Cairo. It's just two hours by, by, by drive. So uh, again, I'm very pleased to be here and of course uh, look forward for more uh, Chinese tourists to, to Egypt and see, see a very hospitable people receiving them. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Ambassador Hanafi. Thank you for sharing with us and introducing a new destination for our Chinese tourists to go when they go and visit Egypt. Thank you. Now, and finally, our first round of discussion. Please let me invite Ambassador Haki Musa of Turkey, please, to share your remarks. Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting us, for hosting us. Turkey is one of the most experienced country in the world when it comes to tourism. In 2022, we received more than 52 million tourists. We were third on a global scale. Our Chinese friends also are interested in visiting Turkey. What are we doing to encourage them? First, the visa formalities are eased. 
the uh, option where internet, where online uh, visa services are also uh, in practice. They reach our embassy and they complete the formalities and they have their visa accordingly. Second, we open the Turkish cultural center in, in Beijing, Yunus Emre Cultural Institute, at during 2021. It's also a big achievement to my mind. Our Chinese friend go to the institute and to have more, more information. Chinese people are most interested to Cappadocia in our country, but, but there are some other part of our country which would be more interested for Chinese people. Okay, xie Thank you very much, Ambassador, for sharing with us your remarks. Now, now we've come to the second round of discussion. I'm going to start again with uh, Ambassador Zinali. Now, Azerbaijan has a state emblem that has fire in the centerpiece. Now, Azerbaijan has a close relationship with fire. Would you please share with our audience, why is the country known as the land of fire? Uh, thanks a lot, I highly appreciate your question. Yes, you are right. Azerbaijan, uh, what we call Azerbaijan also the land of fire. Why? There are uh, several reasons. One of them, uh, before Islam came to Azerbaijan till the 10th century, the Zoroastrians, the, one of the religious was in the Zoroastrianism in Azerbaijan, and the Zoroastrians, they uh, worship fire. So there were a lot of uh, fire temples in Azerbaijan, and then uh, the second reason is across the country you can see a lot of burning mountains, even today. And there are some mountains that uh, they have been burning more than 4,000 years because Azerbaijan has a huge uh, gas and oil reserves. And the gas actually leaking out from the uh, underground to the surface and burning so but today we know the reason but the centuries ago even Marco Polo while passing through Azerbaijan described this uh, the burning mountains uh, like mysterious phenomenon and uh, fire also for Azerbaijani people uh, fire symbolizes the wisdom eternity if you today travel to Azerbaijan if you to visit, for example, Alley of the Martyrs, you see the uh, flame there, and it, it symbolizes the eternity for our martyrs. So fire is everywhere in Azerbaijan. And also meaning of the country is that Azerbaijan means, uh, several sources saying that it means the place where the holy uh, fire is protected. So that's why fire is uh, everywhere. Once again, uh, uh, while answering your first question, I missed uh, the visa requirements. I would like also to add this, that there are certain uh, countries which citizens can get the visa upon arrival to Azerbaijan, and China one of them. So this is, we consider it as a uh, visa-free regime for Chinese friends. So Chinese friends, doesn't, they, they don't need to obtain visa here in China. Please come, get your visa upon arrival at the Baku, enjoy the Azerbaijan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Zinali, for introducing the history and also, you know, connecting to the present. Again, you know, the visa arrangement is great. Um, okay, so Ambassador Al Husseini, a question for you. So we know in Jordan there is the Wadi Rum, which is also known as the Valley of Moon. This is very famous, right? It's appeared in a lot of movies. It's doubled as Mars in The Martian um, and other Hollywood movies as well. Would you please introduce to our audience in China here? Uh, thank you. This is, uh, this is one of the nice things. Uh, you know, in spite of the many beautiful places on Earth that still need to be explored and discovered, 
But uh, space tourism is, seems to be one of those nice attractions for the future. And it's inevitable. In a few decades' time, people will really start looking for this option of, of space tourism. Now, the thing is that why should anyone living now wait for a few decades to have the chance that might not be given to him to visit this space? I'm inviting you all to Mars on Earth. Mars on Earth is simply uh, that beautiful desert piece uh, of the rocky uh, desert area in Jordan, in the south of Jordan. It has that reddish sand, and it has that very much resemblance of the surface of Mars. Uh, this is something we blessed in Jordan, uh, and that's why sometimes they call it, the, the, as you said, right, the, the, the valley of the moon, because at night, with a full moon in the sky, you can only see the landscape of moon on Earth. And during the daylight, you can see the beautiful surface of Mars with its reddish sand everywhere on, 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 on that desert area. Now, the thing is that you can find Earth everywhere, but you can only find Mars and the space in the south of Jordan. And I would like really to invite all the audiences or our friends in China to get this life experience and get this taste of Mars on Earth, and you will not regret. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Very interesting, very intriguing. Space on Earth. Now, we look forward to visiting Jordan. Thank you for sharing with us. Now, Ambassador Nusha, one my question for you. Please share with us what's the importance of the civilization, no dialogue between Chinese and Islamic civilizations. It's, uh, thank you very much. It's a very complicated uh, question, obviously. You know, I've always been asked about the status of relations between Malaysia and China, how close and proximate they are. But I always emphasize that our relationship is not only one that is transactional, but rather civilizational as well. Um, as many would rec uh, of you will know, that about 23 to 24% of our population are of ethnic Chinese origin. So that makes a relationship very special and civilizational as well. Um, His Excellency uh, Zhao Leji, the Speaker of the uh, uh, National People's Congress, was in Kuala Lumpur a couple of days ago from the 18th to 20th. And I think it's very instructive that he not only met the uh, representatives of the Malaysian diaspora, uh, Chinese diaspora in Malaysia, but also to visit Malacca, which was a very famous uh, port back in the 15th century, which Admiral Cheng He visited uh, very many times in the course of his seven voyages. Throughout history, uh, Chinese civilization and Islamic civilization um, has had very close links which have been beneficial for the world as a whole. I'll cite one example. The invention of paper in China was adopted by Muslim countries in that part of the world, in the Middle East, and it is used to transmit not only knowledge from Islam, but also the philosophy of Plato from Greece, which otherwise would have been lost to the West and to the world. So I just wanted to leave that thought in mind, that the relationship between, the close relationship between uh, Chinese civilization and Islamic civilization has not only enriched both our cultures, but the world as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Nishuan, for sharing with us your thoughts on uh, civilizational exchanges. Okay, Ambassador Moin, I'm coming to you for another question. Now, we know this year is the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. This year is also the 10th anniversary of the construction of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, which is a flagship project for the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, what does Pakistan have special to offer for Chinese tourists as a tourist destination? But Pakistan uh, has been a crossroad of civilization. Pakistan is a birthplace of many religions. Many empires, dynasties have prospered in Pakistan. Indus Valley civilization, which is 3,000 old year BC, Gandhara civilization, has all developed and flourished in the land of Pakistan. We have now six UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, so this, this, this uh, rich history and heritage, uh, we are very proud of that. I can bet here that Pakistan has no competition when it comes to the majesty of its mountains. It's a unique place in the world, especially next to, next to Xinjiang, the Gilded Bistan. So a heaven for alpinists, hikers, 
and who are adventure seekers, canoeing, uh, this mountain climbing, you name it. And lastly, and see, I would like to say that this discussion that we are having, having is, is, is an answer to your question that you uh, have asked to a Malaysian ambassador about civilization linkages importance. I think the President Xi Jinping's initiative of global civilization initiative is in practice here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for sharing with us your wonderful insights. Now, I think, uh, as you all mentioned, tourism is a very, very important element for people-to-people -people exchanges and mutual learning. And mutual learning is good for the peaceful development of the world and intercultural linkages and exchanges. Thank you, our six ambassadors, for sharing with us your insights, and thank you for joining this panel discussion on Talk with World Leaders.